So welcome to the Wellness Effect Episode 7. Hope I got that right. Today. Yep, you got okay. it right. Episode 7, the Wellness Effect is a program that's co-sponsored by Sajikor Life Inc. And we are in the epic Sajikor studio. There's a lot of orange, green, and blue here. I hope I got those colors correct, right? HR is giving me a thumbs up. And also the UWI, too many colors to mention, but a Caribbean white institution that happens to pay our salary. Yes, it And does. the Healthy Caribbean Coalition that's also Caribbean white in terms of advocacy and civil society organizations. We are looking at the future today, mm. Dwayne. The future of health and future health. Now, this is such an innovative product that I really have to introduce you to the specialist. So over to my right, who I know very well, but I'm going to let her introduce herself, Dr. Kia Lewis. Go right ahead. Hi, so I am Dr. Lewis. As Thank you so much for having us on the program. It's great to have you. Yes. And I am the co-lead and community activator with the Future Health Project, which we are very excited to introduce to you all. Mm -hmm. Yes. And hi, everyone. Thank you again for having us. Mm -hmm. My name is Joycelyn Aline, and I'm the project coordinator for Future Health. Really happy to be here today. So the reason we're so excited to hear about Future Health is because we know nothing about Future Health. <laughs> <laughs> nothing it's about yet. to change. <laughs> but that's it's about, about to, to change. change. And it's about to change for all of you watching as well, right? I mean, you always think innovation, mm -hmm. look into the future. What is this Future Health? Is this like an AI something going on? <laughs> yeah. what, what are you guys doing? So Future Health is a national initiative. It's co-funded by the IDB Lab right. and Future Barbados. And that's the? Inter-American Development, Development Bank. Bank their right? Innovation Lab, part of their group, mm -hmm. and Future Barbados. And what we're really looking to do is really help to develop the healthcare innovation ecosystem, right? Mm. So the future of health right. and making health and outcomes better. And we're looking to do that through three main pillars. And that's future health incubator, mm -hmm. Got future it. health communities, and future mm. health engine. Ooh. Right. So incubator, communities, communities and, and engines. I, mm. I like it already. And of course, Someone out there is thinking about future health. Is this like robots? What, what? So this is really about innovative thought, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. And I mean, if we could take the opportunity just to delve into the pillars a little mm -hmm. bit more yeah. so right. we understand where we're coming from. For sure. So when we look at Future Health Incubator, mm -hmm. what that is, it's really a structured entrepreneurship program. We understand that when it comes to health tech, um, the ecosystem and in terms of entrepreneurs is quite infant. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work to do. We have some shining star stars, of course, yeah. but it is quite infant and we want to build capacity in that area. Mm -hmm. And so it's a structured entrepreneurship program that helps to provide mentorship and some funding to allow That's persons. That's important. Yes, funding. <laughs> Dinero. Persons who have good ideas, who can identify problems in health, and they have good health tech ideas right. to be mm -hmm. able to develop them into real-world solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's the incubator aspect. We're not talking about eggs. We're talking <laughs> about an I, incubation I got program. You. Okay. I was thinking about eggs, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Future health communities is another really important aspect. That looks at building talent within the ecosystem mm, because, again, we understand you. innovation starts from the ground up. Yeah. When we look at University of the West Indies, exactly. they're very close partners with us. Right. Cool. But there's not a lot of health tech innovation in the programs currently. Mm. And so we've partnered very closely with the Faculty of Medical Sciences. I know that faculty well. Yes, mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do I. Yeah. And the Faculty <laughs> of Science and Technology. Sorry, Dwayne. They said a trade, right? And I can't pick, I can't, I can't play favorite because I come from both. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Affiliated with both. But not social sciences, just saying. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all right. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. But we're partnering with them to infuse health technology. I like that. Infuse. Yes, into their current programs. Right. But we're very excited also to be building out new programs that would allow healthcare professionals, entrepreneurs, and persons that just have an interest to either micro credential or pursue Ooh. a master's in something in the area of digital health. I like so it. So that's really exciting for us. And apart from our partnership with the University of the West Indies, we're also looking to work with entrepreneurs we're looking to work with healthcare workers we're looking to work with anybody who's other uh, stakeholders students, mm -hmm. students, um, students pulling them all together because everything is happening in silos right and yeah. we don't know what's going on Definitely. so getting them together the same rooms with um you know talks and conferences so that we can exchange ideas and really build out the talent aspect for, for future health community. This is exciting. Yeah. And I'm a techie as well. So is Dwayne, but he doesn't like to admit it. <laughs> yeah. uh, the use of technology in health. I mean, you could argue that there is no future in health unless technology is really infused into Correct. it, right? Yeah. And so health tech is really not just 
an innovative kind of think tank. It really is the future of health. It Literally is. is. It is. As the name. As well. the name so suggests, it works right? Perfectly, right? Yeah. 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 I like yeah. That. I like that. So rumor has it, this is rumor, I have no evidence of this because I was <laughs> not invited. Rumor has it that there was a big launch at a campus <laughs> near you, well near us. Uh, at the KFL campus, right? Yes. At yes. Campus. You guys had your launch? Yeah. Yes. Tell we, us about it. we launched officially on June They didn't invite 3rd. me, I'm just joking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we launched officially on June 3rd. Um, right. And it was it was really a very exciting event. So mm -hmm. what we really did is it was a very curated guest list to make sure that we had members from all the different stakeholder groups. So, you know, Kia just mentioned that things happen in silos. So we had mm -hmm. academia, we had right. health, we had industry, we mm -hmm. had insurance. Right. Oh, you nice. know, we had pharmaceuticals. We wanted to make sure we bring everyone because we like to think that future health is acting as the glue mm. to bring all of these different like actors it. and stakeholders. I like it was at the Kefil Surgical School of Business. Exactly. Was that right? Right. My was. department. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we did bring yeah, it. Yeah, it's all right. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah. You're okay for hosting stuff. <laughs> Can be silo. Yeah. Can be so, so we officially launched the event. You know, mm -hmm. we had a lot of remarks. We had mm. um, senior minister from the Ministry of Health and Wellness oh, there. Government. We had Paho there. Mm. Of course, our co-founders, IDB Lab, mm -hmm. and Future Barbados as well as the principal from the University of the West Indies. And we also had a panel. Um, which Kia actually moderated, did a fantastic job. I heard. <laughs> I heard a little bit, right? Job. Yeah. Yes. And, and the panel, and, and I think Kia can expand a bit more, but really we were talking about why there's a need for something like Future Health and why right now is the perfect time. Yeah. Right, to have a program like this that's really going to help with mm -hmm. healthcare innovation and bridging those gaps and really solving those issues. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And you mentioned that you, the, the minister was there. So, is, so you have a link with government as well? So what we're really looking to do is partner with all of these individuals, right? Because right? um, we're trying to make sure that we, as we add as the glue, we're, we're partnering both with public and private healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely something, some relationships that we're finalizing and building. Um, so, so yes, I believe that we have, we have their support and we're really grateful. Um, to be able to have them on board as well. Yeah. yeah, and I think the Ministry of Health, we recognize they're key stakeholders. Of course. Um, we don't have access to the public health system without them. Correct. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is not reinvent the wheel. We want to add support to their you know, objectives. And we know that there's just a big push, both in public and private sector, towards digitization, among other things. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be able to add capacity where they might not have capacity. Mm -hmm. And again, bring the actors together across the yeah. private and the public sector. So it's very important that we have that local relationship with the Ministry of Health. And wider than that, broader than that, the relationship with PAHO as well is integral for us because we have a vision for the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we want to be able you. to bring that oh. into all of mm -hmm. our planning and all of our programming so that we're not just targeting Barbados, but we're starting in Barbados and branching wider so Caribbean it's not, global it's not South. a silo project. I mean, you, you've incorporated key Caribbean stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, have. PAHO is in there. That's, yeah. that's yeah. incredible. I know many of you, are, you have your pens out or maybe you have your smartphones out designing your applications. When we come back from the break, we're going to give you more information on how you can get involved in the future of health. Pause for effect with future health. We'll be back. We often plan for death. Mm -hmm. but we don't plan for life. That so is true. we need to be mindful of that. A critical illness diagnosis can change your life in an instance. On this Wellness Wednesday, we're here with... Rodney Braffitt, and I'm a surgical advisor, and I'm going to give you some tips on why you should have a critical illness plan in your portfolio. Critical illness like heart attacks, strokes, and cancer are more common than you think and it doesn't only affect older persons. Rodney, from your perspective as an advisor, why is critical illness insurance so important? Critical illness is what we call a living benefit, which means it pays out to you while you're alive. So that lump sum, you have options to do whatever you want, either pay for medication and treatment, clear some expenses, or even take a trip and enjoy some of the money. All right, so it's always good to be able to have that lump sum. So who would you say is eligible for the critical illness coverage? Anyone between the ages of 20 and 65. The maximum age for the plan is 75. So it has to be done by age 65. And remember, it's an insurance product. So you still have to be in relatively good health. There are about 20 illnesses that are covered. The more popular ones, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. heart attack, stroke cancer. Okay. So you'll be able to have a wide range of, of illnesses covered under this product. Yes. 
So how it works, once you are diagnosed by your medical practitioner okay. with one of the illnesses, they have to submit a report to us. Okay. When that report comes in, it is reviewed by our team. And if they need any other further tests done, then we send you for those tests. Once that is done and we are satisfied that you are indeed suffering with whatever illness it is, then the PO is made. And can people choose how much coverage they want? Yes, they can. But I will hasten to say this. If you're going to do it, we need to do it properly. So you should have an in-depth conversation with your advisor to see exactly where you are and what you need to cover. What we do, we often plan for death, but mm -hmm. we don't plan for life. That so is true. We need to be mindful of that. And yes. Have it done properly. So have you ever had a client that utilized the critical illness policy? Actually, I am the client. <laughs> I was diagnosed with cancer in 2020 and Okay, so you're out there, you have your smartphone and you're thinking, how am I going to get involved? Because I've got this idea, this burning idea that I'm sure is going to revolutionize some aspect of healthcare. How do you kind of get into the future health mm -hmm. ecosystem yourself? Sure. So you can follow us on Instagram at futurehealthbb. And right when you go on our Instagram, we also have a form that you can just click the link right away yes. and it'll take you to see what you're interested to get involved with us and you can fill that out. So Gen Z has already noted that, right? <laughs> so you can go straight there or you can find us on LinkedIn as well. Um, future Health. Future right? Health. Yeah, Future Health. Is that You'll one find word? There. So it's Future, capital F, uh -huh. and then capital Health. Okay, got you. It's all one word, yes. Got you. Yeah. Um, so that's how you can connect with us. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we look forward to pretty much seeing how you can get involved. So whether that's something, whether you might want to just kind of brainstorm with us, we're taking a lot of, you know, just having some conversations. If you want to be a part of how we're So you actually this. have to have a project. You can kind of say, I have some thoughts about this. I'm not quite sure how to shape it. Mm -hmm. those yeah, kind you, of... you, we can have those conversations. Okay. Um, Because we're currently co-designing for the incubator, which is going to be launching ah. in October of this year for applications. Right. And then the cohorts will start January next year. Mm. You know, so if you have some questions, you're not sure, hey, does this qualify as something that I could get involved with future Got health? You. you can do that. We also have a podcast, Future Health Talk. So if you're a part of the ah. system, Oh, already, podcast, you know, I love it. exactly. It's we love rivals. Yes. <laughs> they want to rival us. <laughs> Never, <laughs> always <laughs> collaboration. Right. Always yeah. yeah. collaboration. Yeah. Um, so if you want to be a guest there, you can also reach out in terms of that. Excellent. You know, and we're also doing a lot of work with the University of the West Indies. So we're always looking for mentors. We're looking to get involved with students. And if you're, you know, a part of a medical institution and you are like, help us, <laughs> we want to innovate in our doors. You know, contact us, and we love to partner. It's interesting you said that. I mean, mm. Kiara, I was going to say that the a lot of innovative thought comes from medical students. Mm -hmm. You know, they've just they come in. You know, they they're ready to change the world of, of health. And during the course, they have a lot of innovative thoughts. And there's no way to channel them, right? Yeah. You kind of just focus. Okay, well, maybe I should just finish this degree and just get on and go into the same routine. But maybe. This is your all focus. This is a really good focus for medical students, especially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And not just medical students, but also persons who are doing the general health sciences program. Of course. And yes. persons, persons in the faculty of sciences and technology. So what we've found, especially in FST, there's right. not enough um, capacity to absorb them once they graduate. Mm. There are not enough opportunities. Right. And I think, Dr. Connell, you know, as well as I do, everybody that passed through MBBS does not want to be a physician. There you the go. End. There we go. They're just kind of stuck yeah. with a degree yeah. and they're like, where do I go? Yeah. And so recognizing exactly. that this is why it's important for us to partner with the Faculty of Medical Sciences and FST to create more opportunities mm -hmm. um, and to create that entrepreneurial mindset from within the university so at important. the university level. Yeah. The other really exciting thing that we're launching this year is the Health Tech Fellows. We didn't yeah. mention that. Oh, wow. But in collaboration again with FMS and FST, yeah. we are actually sponsoring um, four to five students to go overseas. They're going, be, going to be going so to... Opportunity, I hope you're listening. Yeah. Overseas. So, yes, they're going <laughs> to be going to health tech companies right. um, just to, to have that experience be Im immersed in cultures where health tech is really taking off. Right. And then we want them to come back and kind of apply their learnings to this setting. Yeah. So this is what I have learned. We know that we have our constraints, but what can we do differently? Right. And we think that exposure is so important because what you do not see, you, you cannot dream towards. So right. we need them to be able to go in, immerse themselves, see it, get excited, and then come back and be ready and fired up to contribute. Hopefully enter the incubator program and create something amazing. Of course. So what, what, do you do, what do you do to encourage this buy-in though? 
because I can see there's some people who will be anxious, mm -hmm. especially when like you get data. data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. getting WhatsApps already, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you something. So we publicly launched, um, like you said, just last week. Yeah. Right. I don't know what Mendes is... Um, when this is going to be showing, but right. we publicly launched beginning of June. Right. We've been on the ground since December. Mm. Yeah. We have met with so many stakeholders. I know you have the NCD commission for we sure. We did. We mm. did. But we have met with so many stakeholders across Barbados, not just in health, but in all the other sectors, because mm. this is multi-sectoral, right? It it's is. the only way it's going to work. Yeah. Right. So we've really done a lot of the groundwork to get buy-in. And that's the way I think the launch was the success that it was. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, though, we recognize that we need buy-in from the public. There we go. And so that's one of the reasons that's you. why... That's you. <laughs> absolutely. That's one of the reasons why we thought the podcast was so important to yeah. get that information out there. Um, why we set up our socials in such a way that we can give bite-sized information. That's important. Yes. And why we're going to be looking to partner with different organizations, again, like, like yourselves here at Sajikor and yeah. UWE, to really get the word out in ways that people can and understand because there is that fear mm -hmm. around health tech but we know because um Joyson is a LinkedIn expert so she's been able <laughs> she's to throw the web and she's been able to get um international experts from all over the world to connect with us and get them fired up about the project yeah, so we absolutely. know that there are solutions out there right but we just need to be able to share that with the public mm -hmm. um and to begin to you know give them a sense of ease that we're moving in this direction but there are ways that we can protect them as we do that i think that's really important Absolutely to, to put out there so you mentioned your social media handles already instagram mm -hmm. you're on linkedin yes. on linkedin um, and they're very active and on we, both those websites by the way oh excellent i've been stalking them and we have a, a website coming soon okay um, ah. so once you follow the socials then you'll be able you'll to get information yeah. you'll get the information yeah. once our website, website. Viewers, is running yeah as well yes. yeah i mean this is, i mean this is so exciting you know you there's so many people out there watching this program who are going to have projects and having a place that they can come to and just bounce ideas off of to get information. I think, yeah. think that really, and then incubate that project to something that's meaningful. Yeah. I think it's so important, but it's also important for us in the Caribbean space to be innovative, right? And to think because mm. we have limited resources, how best can we use the resources to address the indigenous health needs of our people? Absolutely. Yep. And you know, Ki, I know you wanted to mention this because I was thinking that as you said it, that international experience for your fellows is so important. Yeah. You've just come back from an international experience, yeah. so you know that how it changes your whole perspective of health. Yeah, and you see it differently. So you see it, it differently. Does. A fun fact, Joyce and I are both Sheedness College. Yeah. College. Oh, wow. Um, we there were you in go. the same cohort, same cohort. <laughs> and I don't know, somehow <laughs> ended up that in the same is project. Amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is coincidence. Yeah. Coincidentally, we are also right next door in Sajikor from the British High Commission, right? Yeah. yeah. Just right next door. <laughs> so so shout out to you guys as well. And the Chevening team. I was not a Chevening scholar, but <laughs> I'll apply again. Okay, so get there. we're still in the age limit. <laughs> There's no age limit. You're good to go, right? You're, you're good to go. <laughs> the future of health is right here on the set of The Wellness Effect. We hope that you enjoyed this podcast. We hope that you continue to watch The Wellness Effect. But we also want you to have a look at the new podcast out, which is... Future, Future Health, health Talk. Talk. Future <laughs> Health <laughs> Talks. They have promised to have us on the set as well. Yes, yes we will be guests. <laughs> yes. yes. And guess what? There may be a challenge on that set as well. I hope that you have will follow them on Instagram and on LinkedIn. Look out for their platform. Thanks for joining us on episode seven. Yeah. Episode eight. We half, may be half, cooking half up them. some stuff for you. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Take care, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you.